Hey guys, welcome back to another marvelous video with me, Ray Jericho. Captain Spock is one of the most popular members of the Star Trek universe, as well as in the entire history of pop culture as well. While he is introduced as a Vulcan, Captain Spock is half human and half Vulcan, and he has a very strong personality that helps him stand out among other characters. He has also explored many different corners of the universe in his pursuit of knowledge, and he is certainly one of the most revered members of the Starfleet. Spock also has many unique physiological features and personality traits, and today we will explore them and tell you all about him. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How is Spock half Vulcan, half human? While Captain Spock was born in Shikar on the planet Vulcan, he is not entirely Vulcan and has some human origins. Spock was born to a human teacher named Amanda Grayson and a Vulcan named Sarek, who soon got married and settled on Vulcan. Sarek also had another child named Cybok, and Spock grew up on Vulcan alongside Cybok. He also faced many difficulties due to his origins, and other Vulcan children often attacked Spock and tormented him in order to get an emotional response out of him. While Spock's mother Amanda observed this scene from afar, his dad was indifferent to his human side, even though he had married a human woman. Spock also inherited a form of dyslexia and had trouble learning things, but his mother took care of him and encouraged him to read stories such as Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. As a child, Spock followed traditional marriage procedures, and he was then betrothed to T'Pring. In 2237, Spock decided to take the Vulcan Maturity Test, also known as the Kazwan, which included surviving for 10 days in the forest without food, water, or weapons. However, his pet Salat Ichaya saved him from an attack during the Kazwan ritual, even at the cost of his own life. Spock continued to disappear for days in the mountains, even if his father forbade these trips and punished him for his disappearances. After two human scientists died on Doctari Alpha, Sarek and Amanda decided to adopt their daughter, Michael Burnham. They also asked Spock to teach her the ways of Vulcan, but he was uncomfortable with her presence at first. By the time he got used to having her around, Michael was trying to run away, and then he confronted her and asked her to stay. While Michael eventually stayed, she intentionally tried to drive Spock away by insulting him. Her behavior had quite an impact on Spock and he was so hurt that he lost trust in others. When Michael graduated from the Vulcan Science Academy, Sarek had to choose between her and Spock to join the Vulcan Expeditionary Group, and he chose Spock. Sarek later regretted this decision, and was disappointed when Spock chose a scientific career in Starfleet instead. Exploring the unique physiological features of the unique Spock. While Captain Spock was half-human, his Vulcan genetics were more dominant, and he retained many Vulcan characteristics, such as green blood, enhanced strength, and a greater lifespan, among other things. However, it must be noted that he still lived around 40 years less than the average Vulcan. On the other hand, Spock also had human blood in his body, which was quite evident when Spock could not donate blood to another Vulcan named Sarek. We can also see Spock's human side when the spores on Omicron Seti 3 had an effect on him, and also when the emotional instability of the V'ger probe affected his own emotional state. Captain Spock even admitted that he had difficulty managing emotions, and he later received a mind meld from Captain Picard and embraced his human side. Like other Vulcans, Captain Spock also experienced the Ponfar neurochemical imbalance that occurred once every seven years. The Ponfar was essentially the Vulcan time for mating, and it was followed by a series of rituals. During this period, Spock experienced severe symptoms that could only be remedied by mating or performing Califi, that is, dueling with someone. All in all, Spock had experienced Ponfar twice throughout his life, and he once performed Califi with some help from Captain Kirk, and he mated with Savik the other time. As a Vulcan, Spock could also transfer his Katra into someone else's body, and Dr. McCoy once agreed to be a host for his Katra while he went on a dangerous mission. What was Spock's personality like? Spock had quite a unique personality, and he was quite fixated on logic as the ultimate form of existence. The Vulcans followed a religious philosophy that was based on pure logic, and Spock also lived a path of logic. Even though he might have used his emotions here and there, he had extreme difficulty in controlling his human side at first, but he was determined to eventually complete the Kolinar ritual that purges all emotions, 
and helps one attain a state of pure logic. Since the Vulcans focused solely on logic, they often came across as arrogant or proud beings who nitpicked others and looked down on them. Moreover, they even pointed out flaws in other cultures if they didn't follow the same rules. But Spock usually refrained from this and did his best not to alienate others. However, he was not very humble, which sometimes reflected badly on his character. Spock was also quite well known for his quick wit and sarcasm, and he often used it to mock his enemies. Sometimes, his sarcasm was even a way to get rid of his frustration with others, and he often indulged in banter with his crewmates. While Spock was slightly arrogant and sarcastic, his human side also made him compassionate in tough situations. He did not always agree with others' opinions, but he also did not look down on any race or people. In fact, he was the one to suggest that the Federation must establish diplomatic relations with the Klingon Chancellor Gorkon. After the disaster near their homeworld on Moon Praxis, Spock had quite a curious personality, and he was very fascinated by the mysteries of science. He took great interest in discovering new civilizations, which also made him the perfect candidate to be working as a science officer in the Enterprise. His curiosity sometimes even got the better of him, and he once went as far as to use the mind meld just to figure out how it works. You never loved her! Is Captain Spock intelligent? Captain Spock had many useful traits, but his intelligence was inarguably his strongest weapon. He was quite a rational being who knew how to apply his knowledge for the world's benefit, and he viewed science as a tool for the betterment of society, ranging from scientific theory to math and even philosophy. Captain Spock was eager to learn new things, and he was quite an intelligent being. Right. From Starfleet? What is the Vulcan Mind Melt? The Vulcan Mind Melt refers to the Vulcan's ability to read another being's thoughts by establishing physical contact with them. The Vulcans are essentially telepathic beings who can read anyone's thoughts by touching their heads with their fingers. While they can also perform telepathy without establishing any physical contact, this link is weaker, and it is more efficient for them to use their fingers to touch someone's head in order to perform the mind meld. How does the Vulcan reproduction process work? Vulcans are especially known for their lack of emotions, which makes one wonder how they decide to get intimate with each other and reproduce. Fans have also wondered if anything arouses them, and there is an elaborate process that takes place when they decide to mate. The Vulcans have a specific mating ritual known as the Ponfar that takes place once every seven years in their lives. During this period, Vulcans release their bottled up emotions and fulfill all their sexual urges. However, the Ponfar ritual demands that they either mate with someone or choose to meditate or duel in case they don't want to act on their urges. They have also been conditioned to only mate during the Ponfar ritual, but Vulcan history indicates that they do reproduce even regularly. They simply refrain from expressing any emotions and only reserve them for the Ponfar mating ritual when they experience a flood of emotions. The fact that they are emotionless is also a huge misconception, and it is just that they are very good at repressing their emotions. Vulcans typically practice arranged marriages and even pair male and female children from a very young age. These kids can later grow up and consummate their marriage, after which they are supposed to remain on Vulcan for one year before traveling to other places. In case any Vulcan female does not wish to go ahead with the marriage, she can carry out Kun Ut Kalifi and choose a defender who will fight her bonded male to death in order to free her from the marriage. On the other hand, Vulcan males do not have to go through any such procedure, and they can choose to reject their intended mates and choose another. While most Vulcan marriages are arranged in childhood, any adult Vulcan without a mate can carry out the Kunut Sulik ritual and propose marriage to another Vulcan. Exploring some of the other amazing Vulcan physiological traits. Also known as Vulcanians, the Vulcans are similar to humans in terms of appearance, but they can be distinguished due to their pointy ears and upswept eyebrows. They have a green or bronze tint to their skin, as well as straight black hair. Some Vulcans also have brown hair and body hair as well as facial hair, just like humans. While Vulcan males can grow facial hair, they typically choose to shave it and maintain a clean face. While they physically seem similar to humans, their internal anatomy is quite different from humans. For instance, the Vulcan heart is placed in the same spot as a human's liver, and it also beats at the rate of several hundred times per minute. Their blood turns copper when it is deoxygenated in their veins and then turns green when exposed to oxygen. In this manner, any Vulcan will spot green bruises if they ever end up getting injured. They also have an advanced 
enhanced respiratory system that enables them to exist in the thin atmosphere and they especially thrive in high temperatures. They basically evolved on a planet with desert conditions and they adapted over time in order to survive for days without food or water. They also have enhanced hearing while the Vulcan females possess an enhanced sense of smell. Moreover, Vulcans are at least three times stronger than humans and have faster reflexes and better metabolism. They can go for days without feeling tired or sleepy. And they also have a strong digestive system that enables them to digest any form of food. They have the ability to exert control over some involuntary processes, such as healing from injuries, and can focus all their strength towards their injuries to help them heal faster. They even have the ability to perform the Vulcan nerve pinch that can cause the victim to fall unconscious by just pinching them on their necks. Why did Spock never get married? While we know that Spock was betrothed to T'Pring, he never really got married, and Star Trek The Original Series explored his reasoning behind this. While we know that the Vulcan marriage culture dictated that young males and females must be bonded, Spock kept delaying his marriage and left T'Pring behind while pursuing a career with the Starfleet. Spock and T'Pring did have some good times together before he chose his career over their marriage, and he eventually even returned home to marry her. However, Spock was surprised to learn that T'Pring had decided to opt for the Kun Ut Kalefi challenge to legally get out of their marriage. T'Pring also picked Captain James Kirk as her champion, and she would then be free from her bond with Spock if Kirk managed to kill him. However, Spock won the fight while Captain Kirk faked his death, and T'Pring later confronted Spock and told him that she had chosen another mate. While Spock was busy with the Starfleet, T'Pring chose Ston to be her mate, and she then needed the Kunud Kalifi ritual in order to break her bond with Spock. Since Spock intended to marry T'Pring, he had no intentions of pursuing someone else, and this explains why he did not get married after parting ways with T'Pring. How did Captain Spock die? Spock died a heroic death in Star Trek Wrath of Khan after saving the Enterprise from Khan. Even at the cost of exposing himself to radiation poisoning, his death broke many hearts and fans even sent mail to Leonard Nimoy, the actor who portrayed Spock, and urged him to continue playing this role. While the Wrath of Khan was supposed to be the last piece of Star Trek media where Nimoy played the role of Captain Spock, he later appeared in four more movies, as well as in Star Trek 2009 and Star Trek Into the Darkness. There were many reasons behind this, but the most important reason was that the second phase of the Star Trek franchise was not going well, and they needed something to keep it going. In this way, the creators came up with a new storyline and established that Spock had transferred his Katra to Dr. McCoy, who acted as a host for it until the effects of the Genesis plant resurrected Spock. Spock's coffin returned to Genesis. Paramount Studios also convinced Nimoy to continue playing Spock by offering him the job of a director, and he continued to play Spock until he died in 2016. At this time, the creators wrote his death into the script and established that Captain Spock died off-screen due to old age in the 2016 film Star Trek Beyond. However, there is another younger version of Spock portrayed by Ethan Peck, and he has recently appeared in the Star Trek Strange New World series. Conclusion To sum it up, Captain Spock was one of the most intriguing characters in the Star Trek universe, and he garnered quite a vast fan following over time. Besides his unique origins, Spock's willingness to explore and his pursuit of knowledge also helped him stand out and become one of the most popular characters in the franchise. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.